Hello everybody and this is me again and this is the fifth video related to table view and uh, table view on table view, table view cell. Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how we navigate if we have let's say a list of stores like we would been doing and if I want to know more information about that store obviously you can't put all the information in a cell. So what do you do is that you click on it, or you click on the accessory, uh, the, ac uh, the accessory here, and then it'll show you the detail of that store. And it could be a lot more than this, okay? But for simplicity, we just kept it short. So how do you do this? <clears throat> First, when you have a relationship like this, a master detail uh, re relationship, we usually use what we call the navigation controller. Uh, to navigate between the, the parent and the child or the master in detail. And so we take the, the master file or the list and then we go into an editor and then we say embed in navigator, navigation controller. All right. So I got my navigation controller. All right. The next thing we do is that from here, I want to navigate to here. And the way you do it, you just simply right click here and then drag and drop here. Now we have two options, two ways to navigate from the cell or the table view to the detail view controller. One way to do it is that what we use, we call the selection segue. Selection segue means you simply, simply select on the cell. The other one is the accessory segue or action when you use that means that you click on the accessory here. Okay, I'm gonna show you how we do it with the selection first and then if we have time, I'll show you how we do it with the accessory. <clears throat> all right, so we say we're going to do, because we have a navigation controller, we're going to do push, all right? The last thing we need to do with this storyboard, all we have to do here, give a deet, we give this seg segue an identifier, okay? And the reason is because we want to use it when we use the method prepare for segue, okay? So we're going to say details, okay? And then I'm going to copy it to make sure I got it correctly, command copy, all right? Now we need to go to the list, store list, table view controller. We were way before. Okay, and then I have already some code. We'll just copy it and paste it here in a minute. But when you created a table of view, uh, we have, when, we, when we created the table of view, uh, class, custom class, it gave me already some methods just like we did earlier about the uh, the uh, number of sections, number of rows, and then the number of, and the cell for row. All of these are already available for us. And one of them is also called prepare for segue. So if you comment this, uncomment this out, you have the method for prepare for segue. Now what you need to do, you just need a few steps. The first step is that you check if you're using the right identity, uh, uh, if you're going to the right, uh, you're pushing the right segue by checking the identifier of the segue. If that's true, we get the row for that cell that we've selected, the index path, and the row inside the index path. Then we use that row to get it from the array of objects. And then we take that object and then pass it to the child uh, view controller. Now I've already done this, so I'm going to take this and copy it and, and explain it to you here. All right, this is not done yet. I'll show you how we do it in a minute. So what this do here, it says, okay, if well, I need one part, one part that's missing, which is the identifier, okay. And then I'll do this here. Okay, and then let me fix the code and I'll explain what we have here. Okay, what do we have here? We have, if the identifier is details, remember I didn't have it capital, I have it, oops, I think it was details, small d. All right. So details, if, if the identifier of the segue is details, then I know I need to fire the uh, segue for that detail view controller. Before I do this, I need to get the selected index, okay? So there's a, the table view has a method called, or a function index for selected row. 
That means the one that I've selected. That works only if you touch that cell, okay? Uh, this is different than clicking on the accessory, okay? This is, you click on the cell to fire the segue. So if it is, and uh, this is optional, so this gives you an optional index path. So that's why I say if let index path. So if it is not nil, basically, it will assign it to this index path. And if that's true, the next thing we need to do, we get the store from the array list, which is store list, using that index path that I've created here, dot row. And the object that I'm gonna get from this array, I'm casting it as a store, okay? After this, I can, I get I get access to the view the, to the view controller that I'm going to. That's we use the segue dot destination view controller, and I cast it as a detail view controller. So th I know I'm going to the detail view controller. Okay, there's a couple things that we have to do in the detail view controller. We need to create an attribute called the store, and this attribute. Contain or this object will contain all the information I need to know about that store. Okay, so if I go to the detail view controller right now, and we create, I already. By the way, let me explain to you what we've done in the in the detail view controller here. If you go to the storyboard, this view controller is just a simple view controller that we added here, and we have an image, a few labels, and I have a custom class. This is the detail view controller for attached to this view controller. And in addition to this, I have a few outlet. All of these, I connected them, I created the outlet for them, okay? And I think you know how to do that by now, okay? So we go back to the detail view controller, and we need to create an attribute first, store, and then the type of this attribute is store, and then I'm going to equal initialize it to store. Remember, we have an initializer called store in that store class from the previous video. Okay. This way, if you do it this way, you don't have to create an initializer in the UI in the in this view controller. Okay. Then in the view did load, I take the information from this attribute and assign it to these outlets. Okay. So if I say LBL name dot text <coughs> equal to store store dot store name okay and then I do LBL dot description dot text equal store dot store description and then I say LBL dot name dot phone dot text equal store dot this phone store phone okay the last part is that store image that image equal ui image named i already have that and then i'm going to get it from the store that image store image name okay all right that's all i have to do so in the previous, in the parent class, I set this attribute. When we laid, when we load the view, I display everything on the screen by getting these, assigning this outlet to the information from the store. All right. Um, if we do combine command B, and if we run it, hopefully it should work. So when I click on this, it showed me this, but there is a problem. What is the problem? Something is missing, and I know what it is. Probably spilling with the detail. And the way you know how to do it, if you go back to the store listing, oh, remember that that line that we commented out? Okay, this is that piece that we did not finish. Okay, which means now we have an attribute in the detail view controller, and I'm assigning it to the object that I got from the array. Okay, let's see if it works now. If I do this, it works. Got it? So that's how we do this. All right.
Remember, I mentioned to you, if you don't want to get the selection, what if you don't want to select the cell? You want to just click on the button. Okay, do you see these buttons here? We have, we said we have a button here uh, in the story, in the main story about this segue here. Remember when I clicked and dragged, there's two ways. One of them, the accessory action, portion model, or the other one is what? The selection. What we've done is done, we've done the selection, but sometimes you just want to click on this. It depends on your application. How do you get access to that row? Well, we have to do a little bit different here. And I'll just put the code here and then so you can try it. If you go to the uh, store listing, I already have the line to do this. What you have to do, I'll just copy the whole thing so you can see. And give us an error, but you'll have to do this instead of this line. Okay. You'll do this line. What does this do? I'll comment it and I will uncomment it back. I'll explain it. What this means is that it says this is this part is the same, table view is the same, but now instead of index for index path for selected row, I say index path for a cell. Where do you get the cell from? Well, the sender is the cell that I clicked on. So this here, sender, is actually the cell that I clicked on. So what I can do is I say table view that index pass that for cell, the sender is what is my cell. Okay, so this will give me this for uh, give me the index pass for as the cell, the sender which I clicked on as a UI, you have to cast it as a UI table view cell, so yeah, because it's right now it's any object, okay? So now this will give me the path, the index path, without having to select the cell, okay? You just simply click on the accessory but, uh, button and then it will take you this way. So you have an option either way. You can do it this way or you can do it this way. I'm gonna leave it the way it was and I'll leave the code here for both of them. Okay, that's it. That's the end of this video. Uh, this is a very, uh, very, very powerful tool, technique. It's used a lot. Uh, how to do, you navigate from one, uh, from the master or the list of tables to the details. Now the detail view controller can have a lot more than this. Uh, if you go back to the storyboard, Right now I have only a few information, but this could be a lot more. You can have it as scroll view, you can have it a table view, whatever you want to do, okay? But the point is you can have a lot more than just simply this. In the, as I said, in the next example, what I'll do is that I'll add the map of the store here. So part of the store information is longitude and latitude, and then how we show the location of that store on a map on the screen, all right? Uh, I think this is the end of this series. Uh, if there is a need, I might do one more video for the uh, the the, um, the group table view instead of uh, the plain style. Uh, it's a little bit different, and the way it works is a little bit different. So I might do another video for that table view. But for now. This should give you enough information to create apps with table view and different ways to navigate and populate these tables. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.